calf muscles. So let us get it going. Let us get it going. I've got five past 12 and this will finish us just nicely before Zoom says, thank you very much. Would you like to pay to upgrade? Are we good? One minute, one minute on the cords. Let's not go too crazy with this yet. We're still warming up. We're still getting ready. Okay. One minute on the cords. Still building up. Bring the shoulder into the chin. Keep the head still. Pop the elbow out wide. Rather than start from top to bottom, let's start. We talked about standing on your tiptoes. We talked about getting the hips involved. Talked about the hands finishing past the hips. And then it's shoulders extending forwards into the chin. Get that length, get the length, but keep the head still. Try to take that tra the trailing shoulder bit above the surface so you've got that extension so that you can, if you imagine if you were swimming, you can have that nice narrow stroke. Okay, last 10 seconds, last 10 seconds. In five, four, three, Two, one, I'm gonna roll into some backstroke. Are your cords set up in such a way that you could just leave your hands on and roll into backstroke? That would be great if you can. If not, just let the cords go, let the cords go and just work on your backstroke. So switching from side to side, just like we would on the front crawl. Hands entering little finger first, and then we pivot the elbow so we catch the water. And again, we're using the forearm. We're using the forearm to push the water down towards the feet, just like we would on our full stroke front crawl. The similarities are, are, are the crossover and the benefits wonderful for getting the hang of backstroke. It will make your front crawl a lot more effective. So in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, fantastic. Let's go back to our full stroke front crawl, full stroke front crawl. Now we're at two minutes, please. We're at two minutes. We are at two minutes. Keep the head still. Work on the body position, the rotation from side to side. Pop the elbow out early, pull in with the forearm. Fingertips to elbow is that paddle you're trying to create above the head to push through. Open out the fingers a little bit. I'm excited to get back to the lake tomorrow. It looks like we've got a morning window of opportunity for some sun and then the rain comes later. So fingers crossed that is accurate. That would be nice to get a sunny morning and it was freezing yesterday, although it was still 20 degrees in the water. It was gorgeous in, but not for the us poor lot that were lifeguarding and... <laughs> standing on the beach. It was bitterly cold. It's funny how the temperatures absolutely plummeted here. Um, I reckon maybe we'll be at 19 degrees tomorrow. It seems to, as it, as it outside air temperature drops back, give it a few days and that lake temperature will come back down a fraction. But nobody complained. There were still lots of people in. Karina um, went in without a wetsuit. Gave Danny a hard time, which meant Danny went without his wetsuit, much to his annoyance. Last 30 seconds, last 30 seconds before we go back to our backstroke. One minute. And then we're up to four minutes on the cords. This is such a good block of work. Last 20. Add a little breathing in just to start to check that you're rotating nicely. If you're breathing and you're getting trapped, the trailing shoulder is not elevating behind you enough. Three, two, one, good stuff, roll into some backstroke. If the cords are not happy, then just let go of them, let go of them. But if you're in a vertical position, they should, it should work, it should work. Keep the hands at 180, completely opposite each other. Unlike front crawl, there is no opportunity to sort of mix and match. Backstroke is done with the hands completely opposite each other, with the head absolutely rock solid still. Switching from side to side will enable you to keep them opposite each other and get that elbow pivot. As soon as you sort of out of sync and you're trying to sort of pull and wait, then your, your shoulders are getting locked and you won't be able to get that 
then the next position in. So keep them opposite, keep them opposite. Last 10 seconds before we build it up again, four minutes on the chords, four minutes on the chords. Three, two, one, here we go. Four minutes, we better add some breathing now, we better add some breathing. That's a long time to go without. So I'm gonna use my normal pattern, three to the right. Don't stress about the breathing if you've got enough to concentrate on, working on your technique and so on, but it might just help. Three to the left. Three to the right. And then we take our little crossover back to the left. Good work, everyone, good work. Excellent, excellent. So Tracy, I don't know if you um, saw, actually I don't know, I, he's, he's a good friend of Richie, but I don't know if you've met Ben, the bike guide. He, he's on poolside quite often and helps with the tri camps, but I spoke to Ben the, the other day, I did, I did a podcast with him and he said La Santa, was uh, has been absolutely he was lucky he managed to escape he got back to england ben's a chap with all the the tattoos but uh he said one unfortunate triathlon team flew in on the tuesday and then basically they went into full lockdown on the wednesday this poor team <laughs> they literally were assigned to their rooms they could go to the buffet restaurant get a plate of food and then go back to their rooms that literally was it they were draining the pools. They couldn't leave the complex. They could only leave their room for a, like an hour a day to go for a walk within the La Santa complex. My goodness, that would not have been much fun. <laughs> Duncan, yeah, another triathlon coach, he was with a group at La Platus, the other sort of site over on one of the other islands. They've got a 50 meter pool. And, he, and they got stuck and he, some of his guys couldn't get flights as soon as they wanted. So uh, he was actually stuck during the closure as well. What a nightmare for some poor people it's been. Over halfway swimmers, over halfway, well done, keep it going. If you're warm, if you're nicely feeling this now, take a step back if you can. Make the tension a little bit stronger. Tracy, bend your knees, because I can see you're standing on the floor. Just bend your knees a bit, make it a bit harder. Good work. But don't shorten the stroke, don't exit early. Keep reaching for the knees, keep the hands central, 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 down the backbone. Make that elbow pivot to make it possible and finish through. Don't just exit at the hip above the hip. You don't have to sweep around the hip at the back of the stroke. The hip should be rolling out of the way. Good work, last minute, last one minute. If we can add a little bit more speed, we've added some tension, this is where the improvements are gonna come. Putting some good technique under pressure. Repeating the same movements, the same distance per stroke traveled. Being able to withstand the fatigue building in the arms, fantastic. In 20 seconds, 20 seconds, we've got that nice one minute coming up before the big, big, long distance effort. Eight minutes, probably get about, who knows? Doesn't matter how far you go. Let's just work hard for eight minutes. Three, two, one, and into your backstroke, please, into your backstroke. Stretch it out, relax, recover. Get the body switching from side to side, shoulders brushing. You're still trying to brush the chin as you travel past. Enter with the little finger, pull with the palm and the forearm as you pivot and keep the arms close. You'll know if the arm is straight because you're in the water, you'd be feel yourself bouncing from side to side. You must get the shoulder down, pivot the elbow, and then that way the hand can push the water in that narrow channel like we talked about with the front crawl. Good work, last 20 seconds, last 20 seconds.
in 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, ready? Back on the front crawl, back on the front crawl. Here we go, eight minutes, eight minutes. This is gonna be a monster block of work. If you can take a step back, but don't start. It'd be better to get the four minutes and take the step back. I've got a couple more stairs available to me. I'll see how, uh, and little Aiden's over 10 kilos now, so carrying him around all day is a constant kettlebell workout. So I may just leave it here, but it's up to you, it's up to you. Good work, everyone, good work. So most people, I don't know how you felt, Tracy, but most people haven't found it too bad getting back in the water. I mean, those that have been on the stretch cords, I would hope um, you've been at a massive advantage keeping the swim mechanics, the movements through the arms, the endurance in the arms. Hopefully that wouldn't have found it. Still, it, it's going to feel a bit mechanical and a bit clumsy, but surely it kind of got under control quite soon. And the sooner you can get back in, it's only going to get easier. I was doing a little podcast with a friend, Vicky. She's now outdoor. Well, she did the channel. She, great story. 11 years ago, she, uh, she got like three quarters of the way across the channel and tides turned against her and, and literally they, they had to pull the plug on me, the effort. And uh, she was obviously devastated. But 11 years later, she uh, got back on track and managed a successful crossing last year. I mean, goodness, anybody planning on doing it this summer, that's going to be messy. Um, but yeah, she, uh, we were talking about getting back into the water and she asked for some top tips. And I, I think, you know, if you've just got to get in frequently, you know, it doesn't matter. Keep it short for the first few visits. It doesn't matter. But frequency is key just to get you familiar again. Get the body used to the breathing. Get the arms engaged you know there's no point you know we're not back in the pools yet we've got our dry land this is helping and i would keep that going if you're only sort of getting to the lake once or twice this is really going to help good work good work nearly coming up on three minutes nearly at three minutes just over five minutes to go it's soon it's flying by it's flying by let's get to four minutes let's get to four minutes and maybe take another step backwards i'm sure the arms are learning to cope with this get the reach get the extension in get the catch such a vital part of the the, the stroke what happens here you know in terms of sending you forward in the right direction with the best range of muscles to do it for the least amount of energy and air needed you've got to sort of get this pulling position over and then send the water backwards bouncing down dropping the elbow keeping the forearm horizontal all these things supporting the breathing with a straight arm pushing the arm out wide none of that is going to help you go forwards so if you do go back to some breathing in a moment work on that breath and still trying to get the catch breath with catch breath with catch that if nothing else this couple of weeks on the dry land that would be a fantastic thing to add to your swimming technique breathing and not losing that stroke i mean if you think about breathing every second stroke on an ironman or a 5k whatever you might be doing or longer every second stroke possibly has the ability to either pull you forwards or stabilize and help your breathing Every other arm cycle is wasted. That's a dreadful um, amount of inefficiency creeping in. Okay, there's your four minutes, there's your four minutes. Take a step back if you can. Let's add a little bit more tension. It's all downhill after this piece, all downhill. Good work, but don't, as always, let the technique suffer in an attempt just to move further away and put the arms under a bit more tension. Little space between the fingers, pulling with the forearm, get those wetsuits on tomorrow morning, make sure those fancy panels are aligned nicely under the forearm, not to the one side, so when you are pulling well, 
you've got that slippery surface whizzing through the water, not helping you. You want those dimples, the rippled edges nicely aligned so that they help anchor, hold, and you travel forwards and over, making best use of that momentum. Three minutes to go, three minutes to go. We're nearly there, nearly there. Add in some breathing. Think about the timing of the breath. This is something we don't talk about too much. It's a little bit tricky, but as that hand travels under the face, be turning, be turning, get to the surface well before the hand is exiting so that you can get the head back to its neutral position before the arm recovers through and has the potential to upset it. You often see this happening. The arm travels across, the back of the arm is exposed, another breaking surface, more surface area, unnecessarily exposed. Try to land it neat. Um, we often talk about entering wide, knowing that the rotation will drive to the center. On dry land, you can see that quite nicely from sort of, imagine my elbow is high, I've got that sort of classic high elbow recovery, and I'm gonna enter slightly wide, knowing that that rotation will drive the hand to the center, and then I've got that pull. Don't enter so wide, stay wide, and pull wide. That's a lot of surface area exposed. It's a lot of strain, and you're possibly gonna take that even wider as you pull. Okay, equally, if you enter narrow, okay, enter sort of here, the rotation could drag you across the center line as well. Just a few more things to keep in mind. All right, we are at 90 seconds, nine, last 90 seconds, keep it going. The next big block is only four because we're going down the other side now. Remember, it's a pyramid of pain. We've built to the highest point in the middle, and then it's downhill on the other side. It's going to be a four and a two, and we'll soon get through those after this monster in the middle. Good work. Take a step forwards. Take a step forwards if you need to. If you feel the stroke is shortening, if the arms are crying out for a little bit of respite, Less than a minute to go, less than a minute to go. Hang in there. Forty-five seconds. Come on, we can make this. Reach for the knees, don't finish short. Reach for the knees, keep it going, keep it going, keep the stroke long. Thirty seconds, we're there, we're there, come on. My good friend Steve, uh, the tri coach whose camp we go to Italy uh, in May, obviously we sadly had to cancel that a few weeks ago, he just released dates for next year, so he's confident and keen. I can send those to you if you'd like to join us for a tri camp in Italy in May, just north of Rimini. Three, two, one, and on to our recovery. One minute of backstroke, one minute of backstroke. Nice and slow, nice and easy. If you need to have a drink, have a drink, use this time. 45 seconds of recovery, stretch it out. Fantastic to be adding in so much backstroke through a, a big block of front crawl. Keep reversing the movement. So much of our work, driving, typing, everything is rolling the shoulders, hunching forward. Backstroke gives us a chance to reverse all of that, reverse what the front crawl movements do. Learn backstroke and, and add it into your swims. It would make your front crawl blocks of work so much more interesting, or your, your front crawl, the majority of your, your front crawl swimming just gives you another dimension to be so much more interesting. In 10, nine, eight, last one is four, no, the next one is four minutes, the next one is four minutes. Three, two, one, take a step back if you can. And we go again, four minutes, here we go. Good work, everyone, good work. Add in some breathing, think about the timing. So I, think, uh, I think a lot of people don't realize uh, how much earlier you have to get the head turning. So literally, you have started your catch, you have got the fingertips under, and then literally we are into that turn. If you leave it much later than that, if you watch the hand travel under towards the hips, you'll have turned, the arm will be recovering, you'll have got your air, and then things will start to travel together build momentum in a way that might not be beneficial. So if it helps, just work on that a little bit earlier, get to the side, 
get the head back to neutral a little bit earlier. Three minutes to go, three minutes to go. Well done, everybody. I'm just in the middle of trying to get a, a blog entry done, a little newsletter, show what we've been doing during this less than busy time. Although actually, uh, my father-in-law said, "Oh, are you bored yet?" Well, you know, I was like, oh, I "Could not have been busier, really." Our, um, our little training plan website has been converted over to a phone app. That's nearly done. There's a, I've just ordered um, 500 pink session in the bottles. Um, finished the design, they've been signed off. So pink is coming with some longer swimming sessions. You might be interested in those. Uh, more podcasts have been done. This week I spoke to Andy, uh, an old friend. He's been racing for 34 years as a triathlete. He has seen it all. Um, really nice guy. Sadly, lost his wife who met, he met at a, at a race many, many years ago. Um, she, the pair of them were regulars on Steve's Italy camp. Lovely couple. And he tells us how he's adapting and coping and working. We tried not to make the podcast just all about, you know, how to swim faster, you know. Um, I want it to be a little bit more interesting, chat with some of the people we meet, we talk to. You might remember Micah um, back at Lanza. She was fascinating talking about how to reduce cramping. Her background in nutrition and diet is phenomenal. Um, she was a great character to have on the podcast. Obviously, Steve's there. Steve talks about his trip to Sydney to coach the British Olympic team. That was, I went to watch that one. That was amazing. That was a really good Olympics. Uh, I promised myself one day that I would like to go back and what, having sort of raced at Olympic trials in, gosh, when was it, 88 and 92. Uh, I did okay. I made finals, but I was never good enough to really go. But, um, I wanted to go and watch one, and so Sydney, and actually sort of saw Steve there, but didn't wasn't really, you know, too sure of who he was at that point. I hadn't really met him, but I did see him, and his athlete Sean uh, was an old school friend of mine. So it, it, my triathlon career, sort of, or interest in try really kick, got kickstarted at that point. Last fifteen seconds, keep it going, keep it going. In ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fantastic. Rest and recover into the backstroke. Take a step forwards or release the cords, whatever's easiest for you. Shouldn't really be any tension on this. I'm just leaving the hands in just because it's a little bit easier. Might ping around, maybe a bit like Tracy's. Once you let go of them, they'll be up in the rafters. You have to get a ladder or Charles to come and help retrieve them. So uh, I'm just going to leave my hands in. But there's no tension here. It's nice and easy. Relax. Head still. Shoulders switching from side to side. Try to get the hand pulling. And if you want to practice the backstroke catch, what's it's funny at swim club, we moan at the kids for pulling on the lane rope. But actually, this is quite a nice way. You can imagine my hand sort of holding a lane rope here and setting the mechanics in motion to pull me along the edge of the lane rope with this, uh, literally just get the fingertips stuck into the uh, little... Uh, disc hold and then pull through it really teaches you the correct movements all right in three two one take a step back if we can here we go only two minutes now two minutes okay run a little diagnostic let's go top to bottom this time okay what's the gap between the fingers looking like can we create a paddle from fingertips to elbow fingertips to elbow early pivot sending the water down towards the feet is the head nice and still unless we are turning to breathe? You'll be so bored of me saying this little uh, dialogue, but honestly, every few minutes on your long distance events, you'll run this through and it will help keep your technique at optimum. Are the hands pulling under the backbone? 
I'll be getting down towards the knees. Don't just finish at the hips. I sort of recite this back every few minutes, just so, I mean, one, it gets your mind off the, the boredom and the fatigue, but it will keep you swimming with a better technique repeatedly. One minute to go, one minute to go. I mean, that's all it needs, that's all it needs. And, it, and it's, you know, it's something useful. When um, one of the psychology books I read talked about the, the chimp, you know, chattering away and telling you to quit, ease back, bin it, get out early, stop the training, stop the racing. Um, you know, you've got that little voice in your head. You know, if you can just exclude that, keep going, you'll be on for some good performances. Last 20 seconds, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. 15, keep it going, keep it going. Don't shorten now, don't shorten now, keep it going. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and relax, relax on the backstroke, relax on the backstroke. Good work, everyone. Woo! Nice and easy, get the breathing under control. Reverse the movement. So yeah, get the fingers anchored into the lane rope, pull yourself along, try to keep the body as close to the lane rope as possible. So you, it encourages the elbow to pivot, the shoulder to be in the right position. It almost sort of tells you what to do by pulling yourself along. Try it. You know, be careful, one arm on the one direction, and then as you turn around and come back, use the other arm. And you'll soon get the idea of this elbow bending to keep the hands close to the sides, close to the sides. Okay, last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Ready, here we go, take a step back, take a step back. One minute, we're nearly done, we're nearly done. One minute strong, let's go, let's go. I'm being told that the internet connection is a little bit unstable. Hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, I think I will, um, going forwards, I might expand this to um, doing a session on my swim bench and see who's got swim benches around the world and maybe if they want to sign up. Um, so I might just upgrade and see if the uh, quality of Zoom's any better, any more stable. I mean, it, you've got to imagine that those with the free version probably don't get as such a good maybe the the paid one gets all the good bandwidth i don't know how it all works but uh, hopefully you might see some improvements we're going to try to do that for next week and see 10 9 keep going keep going five four three two one fantastic relax there back onto the backstroke back onto the backstroke good work everyone Very nice set, very nice set. Good work. Get, let the breathing start to come down now. Slowing things down, the body starts to realize it doesn't need to be pumping the blood so hard. The capillaries and all the vessels will start to reduce back to their normal sort of shape and size. Things will start to calm down. You don't want to ever just walk away from some hard exercise. It sort of leaves things with the potential to get sore, heavy, lethargic, and just sort of not be great for your next session. So spend a few minutes. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of uh, rotation work for those that did not have the vertical cords. Let's just keep the head still. Rotate through, shoulder towards the chin. Let me just get rid of this running out of time message yeah so head nice and still she can still shake the arms out good work get the hips involved feet are planted obviously but let the hips follow don't ever bring the chin over okay that's something we don't want to encourage in your full stroke front crawl that's good if you've got the space draw the sword 
Take it out of the pocket through sweep round. So the shoulder starts high, swings low as your hand comes to the neck and then returns high. So again, you're getting the rotation, but this time you've got a little bit of momentum through the arm. Great exercise to do with a very light weight as the hand travels away from the body with that light weight. It feels like it gets heavier, it builds up speed, and then you've got to use the muscles to stop it crashing into the back of your head. It's very effective. If you don't learn it, you'll learn it the hard way. <laughs> and 10 on the other side, please. 10 on the other side. Yeah, it's great. Good work, everyone. Good work. Good stuff, good stuff. Excellent, excellent. Unfortunately, the gang are not back from the park yet, which is helpful, because um, the other day he was crawling up my leg, which was not quite amusing, trying to stay concentrated and focused. Um, Babak, have you swum yet? Is your pool opposite you open? Uh, no, I think it's 14th of June, the one close to me. Yeah. Some um, pools will open 8th of June. Oh, okay. And the plan is for the next week, the one uh, that I send you the photo. Yeah, but it's great. not also sure. Yeah, it is the preliminary decision. Yeah, they have to see. Okay. It's it a great goes. picture. Looks, it looks like there's like four swimming pools, no? Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but there are weir, weir pool and kid, kid pools, actually, the others. Okay, yeah. This one is a bit non-standard banana shape. Uh, yes. <laughs> But still, there are li lanes that you can normally look down and follow the lanes, actually, yes. Brilliant, brilliant. It's still oh. good, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I really miss water. I don't know how, how was your feeling uh, yesterday. Good? Tracy swam Tuesday, yeah? It was okay? It was lovely, yes. It was really nice. You, the water picked, was warm. The you weather picked was the best. Good. You picked the best day. Yeah. <laughs> well, I did swim at our local lake yesterday. Okay, okay. Um, but it wasn't, I mean, it was later in the day, so it wasn't as cold as probably you in the morning, <laughs> but it was in the water than it was out, yeah. definitely. Were you swimming this it weekend? Feels, um, I mean, it just feels so slow. I'm pleased that my shoulders really feel quite okay, so thanks for the um, stretch yeah. cords, I think. Maybe a little bit in the front here, that's what was probably eight when I was swimming. Oh, interesting. Okay. That, that bit there. Uh, but I think that's all to do with because I don't do, I, don't, I still don't do that properly. That puts pressure on. I know, I know. You'll be teaching me till I'm 100. <laughs> 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 but it was nice to be in the water. And I presume that just eventually, you know, it would just all come back. And I mean, I did it non wetsuit as well. So it's going to be harder. That's, that's yeah. tough. First one back. That's tough. That's tough. When I did 2K, like two, two, okay, nice. two loops, because you told me to do a second loop. I thought I was going to be the last one out the water. I was like, oh, my God, they're all going to be finished and bringing the boys in before I even get back. <laughs> I did miss the last corner. <laughs> oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're Great. Nice. Uh, oh, brilliant. Well, everyone, have a lovely weekend. Uh, and uh, lovely. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link for for Monday, yes. okay? If, um, if if things change, I'll send you the link, and hopefully you can make it Monday, okay? See you later, guys. Bye bye. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Have a nice weekend and very nice uh, training today. Thank you. Good Thank stuff. You. Well done. Yes. Ciao. Bye.